Shalom, everybody. This is Branches of Yah. Today I wanted to do a quick teaching just about some of the doctrine that's still out there. Now, there's plenty of doctrine out there still talking about Christianity. We won't get into everything, but one thing we want to address is nowhere in Scripture does it tell us to take a line of Scripture upon a line of Scripture to go into that and create a doctrine. It doesn't tell you to take a little from here and a little from there and to create a soup or a stew and create a whole new doctrine or a doctrinal belief or teaching. Matter of fact, where they're quoting from is Yeshiyahu or Isaiah 28. So we must read it in its context and understand what the words mean before we go saying that this is saying to take a little of scripture from this part and from that part and create a doctrine. That's not what it's saying. Matter of fact, it has nothing to do with scriptural doctrine. When it comes to line upon line, it is not talking about doctrine. It is actually not talking about anything of the word it is quite literally talking about a measuring line. But let's go in and take a look. So it says, Woe to the proud crown of drunkards of Ephraim, and to the fading flower of its splendid comeliness is on the head of the fertile valley to those who are overcome with wine. So we remember that Yeshiyahu here, Isaiah, is in the time of Babylonian captivity, is a contemporary of Daniel. And Daniel which we will get into his teachings later, his writing. But he's talking about some of the other. There are many so-called prophets at this time, and they're teaching all kinds of things. Talmud was born out of this time, and they're teaching and things that are Talmudic, which is they're taking the Mishnah, and they're putting commentary, and they're putting a burden on the people. But they're also teaching things that weren't in there. They're undoctrinal things things that were not of Yah's word. And by this, they're measuring everybody and condemning them with their words and even their actions. So he's talking about those that are drunk on the wine, the teachings of Ephraim, those that are following him and don't have any discernment. Let's continue. See, Yahuwah has one who is strong and potent like a downpour, of hail and a destroying storm like a flood of mighty waters overflowing who cast down to the earth with the hand the proud the crown of the drunkards of Ephraim is trampled underfoot and the fading flower of its splendid comeliness that is on the head of the fertile valley like the first fruit before the summer which when one sees he eats it up while it is still in his hand in that day Yahuwah of armies or hosts is a crown of splendor and a headdress of comeliness to the remnant of his people and the spirit of right ruling to him who sits in right ruling and strength to those who turn back the battle at the gate so what's he telling you this he's talking about people who walk in Yah's word will wear his crown his righteousness and he's also giving us a very prophetic picture of Yahusha, of his deliverance that he will be sending, the one it is to come. And he says, And those, these two have gone astray, through wine and through strong drink wandered about. Priest and prophet have gone astray, through strong drink they are swallowed up by wine. They wander about through strong drink. They go astray in vision, they stumble in right ruling. For all the tables shall be covered with vomit, no place without filth. Whom would he teach knowledge? And whom would he make to understand the message? Those weaned from the milk, those taken from the breasts? For it is the command upon command, upon command, line upon line, upon line, here a little, there a little. For with a jabbering lip, and a foreign tongue he speaks to this people. So here we see he's not talking about taking command upon command, precept upon precept of 
let's go in and look at the Strong's or the Brown Drivers Briggs, which is better, the Strong's numbering system, and help figure out what this is actually kind of saying. So precept is saw. Saw means command or ordinance used in a mocking mimicry of, of Yeshiyahu's words, and that's not a true command of Yah. In other words, he's mocking what's going on here with these people who are drunk. Even the ones that he's called are drunk on the wine, the teachings of Ephraim. They've become enamored of these teachings, these Talmudic teachings. So let's go back and let's look upon line upon line. According to modern teachings, this is talking about scripture, but it's not. It is kov, or ka, actually, because there was no v. So it'd be cord, a line, a measuring line. A cord, a measuring line. And again, he's talking about the animeth poetic mimicry of Isaiah's words, perhaps senseless. In other words, he's talking about the line in which they are measuring. They are giving false teachings at that time, and he's talking about the measuring line in which they're using. Now, there's many things going on there, so it's talking about everything from division of land to everything else, but here it's quite literally talking about the line in which they are using the, to measure others. And do we not see in the Word that it does tell us that the line, the measure by which you use to measure another, shall be the line or the measure that shall be used to measure you. In other words, be sure that you're walking in upright and righteous rulings of Yah and not of men when you measure another because we do not want to be an heir. So we go further into the word. He says here a little, there a little, for with a jabbering lip and a foreign tongue he speaks to his people to whom he said, this is the rest, give rest to the weary, and this is the refreshing, but they would not hear. But the word of Yahuwah was to them, command upon command, command upon command, line upon line, measuring line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they go and shall stumble backwards and be broken and snared and taken captive. In other words, he's using the very measuring line that they use to measure another for not following their precepts, their teachings, to measure them against his teachings, his word. He says, therefore, hear the word of Yahuwah, you men of scorn, who rule this people who are in Jerusalem, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and Sheol, or grave. We have effected a vision. When the overflowing scourge passes through it, it does not come to us, for we have made lying our refuge, and under falsehood we have hidden ourselves. Their false teachings... In other words, they hide behind the nonsense that they're making up as they're in captivity, and as they're entering, going back into Yerushalayim. He's telling them, you have brought this nonsense that you have learned and you have made up in Babylonia. You have syncretized, you have blended in the teachings of others with Yah, and then you have lied and hidden beneath it, making yourself to appear righteous and upright when you are not. And the line in which you are measuring everybody else by will be the same line by which you will be measured. It goes, goes on. It says, Therefore, thus says the Master Yahuwah, See, I am laying in Sion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a settled foundation. He who has trust shall not hasten away. Okay, this is quite literally... Yosha Mashiach. This is quite literally Yahuwah Jr. that he is talking about. And we can go scripturally, line by line, if you will, that we can find that he is the measuring line. He's quite literally setting the measuring line by which we will be measured. It's Yahusha. It is the cornerstone. 
It is the stone in Sion, a precious cornerstone and a foundation of our belief. And I shall make a right ruling, the measuring line. Ooh, wait a minute. There it is, straight out, measuring line. And righteousness, the plummet. A plummet is a tool that is used for finding a level, for finding whether or not something is level or upright. So it is telling you that it is true and level. That's what a plummet does. And the hail shall sweep away the refuge of the lying, and the waters overflow the hiding place. And your covenant with death shall be annulled, and your vision with the grave, or Sheol, not stand when an overflowing scourge passes through. Then you shall be trampled down by it. As often as it passes through, it shall take you, for it pass through every morning and by day and by night. And it shall only trembling to understand the message, for the bed shall be too short for a man to stretch out on, and the covering shall be too narrow to wrap himself in it. For Yahuwah rises up on Mount Peratzim, and he is wroth or angry as at the vict- valley of Gibbon to do his work, his peculiar work, or his strange work, and to do his deed, his peculiar deed. In other words, men cannot understand these things. It says the wisdom of Yahuwah is folly or foolishness to men because his ways are not our ways. They're higher And now do not be scoffers, lest your bonds be made strong. In other words, don't mock this. Otherwise, you're just the captivity that you have put yourself in, the slavery to sin and death, which you are hiding underneath, will be made even stronger. For I have heard from the Master, Yahuwah, of hosts, a destruction, a decree upon all the earth. Give ear and hear my voice. Listen. And hear my word. Does the plowman keep plowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods when he has leveled its surface? Does he not sow the caraway and scatter the cumin? Plant the wheat in rows, the barley in the anointed place, and the spelt in its place? For he instructs him in right ruling as Halloween teaches him. In other words, these guys, even though the ground had been sowed by the word of Yah, went back in with their plows and they kept plowing up the dirt because they kept adding to the word of Yah and making it even worse. They were trampling down what had already been established by saying, this now is the interpretation of the word and they made it a burden upon the people. And this is what he's saying. You're going to be, everything you're teaching is going to be looked at and it is going to be found whether it is true and whether it is on the level, and whether it is in righteousness, that measuring line that you are using to condemn others shall be used against you, line upon line, your teaching upon your teaching. It is not commanding us to go into the Word and take a little bit of Scripture from here, a little bit of Scripture from there. That Word does not mean ever Scripture. Ever, under any circumstance, and you can go throughout Scripture and look that word up, and you will be amazed to find that in no time ever does that word mean Scripture. It's kal, Q-A-U, and it never means Scripture. It is Strong's numbering 6957. Go throughout Scripture, find it wherever it may lay, and look it up. Under no circumstance is that talking about the Word of Yah. It is quite literally talking about those that are worshiping death. In other words, by what they're doing, they're making it impossible, and people will fall short. It is a stumbling block before these people, the line that they're using to measure them. We must be careful that we don't fall into the traditions of men and allow these measuring lines to be used against us and don't use them against others. Love one another. Love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind. And love your brethren, your neighbor, as you love yourself. 
If you do that, then when you go into the Word, you lay down those preconceived notions of what you think the Word says because a pastor, a priest, or a preacher of some kind told you it means something that it does not mean. And they've used it so often and you're so familiar with it that you cannot help but to use it yourself. It does not mean what they say it means, ever. We're not to take a little scripture from here and a little scripture from there and create a stew to create a doctrine or to create a teaching. It is not given by Yah himself. Remember, not every word in scripture is of Yah. Some of it is just the historical background of when we are faithful to be obedient and we, when we are disobedient and stiff-necked. And it shows the consequences of our actions. But it gives the promise that Yahuwah gave Abraham and it gives us the same promise through the impalement of Yahusha HaMashiach should we teshuba, turn around, turn back to Yah, preach the kingdom, teach the kingdom, tell everybody about the Besorah, the glad tidings, the wonderful news, the amazing, awesome news of Yahuwah, our Elohim. You have a relationship back with Him. Don't create your own doctrine. Don't follow what man has taught. Bear it out for yourself. Be more noble than the Thessalonians. Be a Berean. Be even more noble than the Bereans. Go into the Word and study it for yourself. It's easy now. There are interlinear books that you can, you'd be amazed. There is scriptural studies out there that you can glean so much knowledge from. Don't use this as a measuring line to condemn anyone either, but just use it for knowledge, for understanding, and for teaching in love. Love one another. Continue on. Hallelujah. We love you. We hope this was edifying. We'll talk to you soon.